Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here, and we're happy to have you join us again today. Well, one of the biggest things that we hear from men is that they feel they need a spiritual jump start in their life. They know their spiritual life and their walk with God could be better, and they just need a jolt to get it going. Well, today we're going to look at ways to jump start your walk with God to help you break through barriers that keep us from moving forward. And we're happy to be joined today by a friend of mine, Jason Torval. Jason is the lead pastor at Shrewsbury Assembly of God. He's an author, and he's a host of a weekly podcast for pastors. Um, Jason recently released a new book, The Five Shifts, and in this book, Jason shares five key areas of our walk with God that we can work on to get that jump start so many men are looking for. So Jason, it's great to have you join us today. Welcome to the Mentor Guy podcast. Thanks, brother. It's so good to be with you and your listeners here today. And just on a side note, we all want to thank Jason. He helped me a lot when I first started this podcast up. He helped me figure out how to do it and get going. So what we're doing here, a lot of it's in part to Jason. So thanks, for Jason, for helping me with all that. Absolutely. Believe in your message, Jamie, and the ministry that you're bringing to men in our culture today. It's a great work you're doing, brother. Well, I really enjoyed reading your book. And in the intro to the book, you write that the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom mentally in stature physically, in favor with God spiritually, and with man relationally. And you base the five shifts off of this theme, showing us how to become more like Jesus. Can you share with the listeners a little more about why you felt led to focus on these areas? Yeah, that that scripture is taken directly from Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And as Jesus in his younger years leading up to his public ministry, um, these are the ways that he began to grow. And I think oftentimes where we feel stuck as men are in one of these four areas, perhaps emotionally, or sometimes we call this mentally, um, we're stuck. I, I know as a guy, most of the time, I don't know what to do with the emotions, even if I'm able to recognize them in my own life or perhaps in my family. Um, the, the, the physical aspect, the older I get, Jamie, the more I feel stuck in this area, man, let me tell you. And then certainly spiritually, I mean, we don't have anybody kind of investing their lives in us mentally, physically, spiritually, or even relationally, where we know our own blind spots, where we get some guidance to help us break through to the other side. And so what ends up happening, we either bail because we don't like to fail, or we get so frustrated we live just as simply a despondent life at that point. And so that's really these four areas become the crux, um, and they branch out from there for vocationally. They end up impacting our finances and so forth. But um, whenever we can get unstuck in these four areas, man, there's the freedom that we have in God. Well, the first shift that you discuss is the need to live empty. And I really found this section just really interesting and had a lot of great truth in it. What Mm. does it mean to live empty, and why don't many Christians live this way? Now, I describe living empty as the new fool in Scripture. Uh, Jesus said if we want to find ourselves, we have to lose ourselves. And really, that's the best summary that I can give about what it means to live empty. To live empty is to no longer try to fill your life but to give your life. And as men, you know, I feel the pressure as a husband, as a father, and then certainly in my role here at the church to make sure that bank accounts are full and doing well, that we have food on the table, that our bills are paid. And so we're always trying to accumulate. But I truly, uh, what Jesus eventually said, um, that we have to be able to empty our lives, to give of our lives, if we ever want to find that fulfillment in our own lives. So living empty really is the new full according to a gospel standard. And you also discuss in the book the need to lead with grace. Um, what does that mean and how can men apply this to their lives? How, what steps can they take to begin leading with grace? Man, um, this is one of the ones I struggle with the most, Jamie, if I can just be transparent. Um, leading with grace, um, most, most of us men are very at least I'll say it for myself, we're results-oriented. 
Mm-hmm. And so the moment that the results are stuck, um, we, we feel like there's a slowing down. A grace is the last thing that comes to our mind. You know, I, I am competitive by nature. I hate to lose. I hate to feel like I'm falling behind. But grace extends love no matter what the circumstances. And so leading with grace really inter, um, it enters into our everyday relationships. That's the best way that I could describe it. The way we treat if we're married, our spouse, the way we interact with our friends. Um, it's, it's the opposite of judgment. And it's not that we don't call sin, sin, or truth, truth. But whenever we look at the individual, so oftentimes we see that Jesus would weep over people. He had compassion on the crowds. And I really think there's there's something manly. There's something that requires great strength in our life. When we lead with grace, it says that I'm strong enough to handle whatever comes this way. And so I can be gracious and compassionate to you because I am confident and secure, not just in myself, but in my position with God. And so leading with grace brings it right into our relationships. I know in my own personal life, I really have had to adopt that, especially in my relationship with my dad. Um, Mm. My dad was my abuser growing up, and for most of my life, I was just angry and had unforgiveness towards him. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit led me to one day stop and think, you know, Stop looking at your dad through the eyes of a little boy who's hurt and start looking at him through the eyes of a grown man with grace. And I started realizing my dad, even though what he did was wrong, Mm -hmm. he did the best that he could do. He had a horrible past. He had a horrible childhood where he's treated way a thousand times worse than I ever was. And when Mm -hmm. I start looking at him through the eyes of a grown man and see that he was doing the best he could... Mm-hmm. It wasn't excusing his sin, but it was extending that grace to him. It allowed me to heal. So mm-hmm. I get what you're saying about we need to lead with grace. We need to start looking at people through the eyes of compassion, basically how we would want other people to look at us. Exactly. And forgiveness really is a key part. And in, in there we talk about a little bit about forgiveness. And forgiveness is not whenever somebody says they're sorry. It's whenever you're tired of carrying around the pain. Amen. I tell our church... I tell our church folks all the time, um, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to suffer. Uh And um, leading with grace, a major aspect of that is forgiveness um, proactively. Yeah, and I I really did enjoy that section. And then another section you talked about being a lifter. And you don't hear that phrase very much, being a lifter. Can you share a little bit about this section and what it means and how guys can, you know, work on being a lifter in their lives? Sure. This is shift number four in the book. The first four, uh, three shifts really focus on our personal behaviors. And this is where it begins to shift a little bit um, outward beyond us, where we're not just concerned about self, but we're willing to take others on the journey with us. And this can be a little scary because uh, people see our flaws, our imperfections, And being a lifter begins whenever we're willing to take others on the journey with us. And in the book, in this fourth shift, I talk about my youth pastor, Jamie. Um, He's pastoring now down in the Potomac section and um, district. But he took us on the journey with us. He'd bring us to sporting events in high school. He worked out with us in our basement on a regular basis. In fact, most of the weights that we lifted, me and two of my other friends, he's the one that purchased. It would have been a lot easier if he just would have worked out on his own, but he chose to lift weights with us. And not only did he take care of us physically, um, but man, he invested his time. And there is no lifting others apart from our time. That's how we give of ourselves. And so being a lifter is being willing to take other people on the journey with us. Don't eat alone. Don't sit alone. Don't travel alone. Take people with you on the journey of life. And that's something I think a lot of guys really struggle with. We're so bent towards wanting to be alone or being loners. And not always because of choice. Maybe it's just because... We're too afraid to reach out and take that step. But whatever reason it is, a lot of guys struggle with loneliness. So what Mm -hmm. are some practical steps men can take to overcome that? Just just break out of their shell and start being lifters. Well, I think for me, one of the fears that hold me back in this area, Jamie, is my fear of rejection. Um, 
you know, if you if you're going to invite people along the journey, or even just inviting guys over to watch a game, you're going to get a lot of no's with a few yeses. Mm-hmm. Your people's schedules and so forth. And so that's why the first three shifts focus on self before we focus outwardly um, here in the Be a Shifter. So the fear of rejection, we have to deal with our own stuff we will, before we're willing to work with others. And, um, and then the other one is just simply a fear of failure. Most men, we fear failure worse than we do death. Mm-hmm. And it keeps us frozen and stuck in our own lives. And that's where uh, beginning to invest in other people's lives, recognize you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be the epitome wise man coming down off the mountain. Uh, Most people are just looking for somebody to take the journey with them. And so if I can put it this way, since this is for men, we gotta get over ourselves, Jamie. (laughs) I mean, we just gotta move past our own insecurities and just say, hey, you know, if people want to take this journey with me, great. If not, I get it's not the right time and not be offended ourselves and just keep and which leads us into the fourth shift of moving forward. Just got to keep moving forward in our walk with the Lord. Yeah, that's what the next shift I was going to talk about is the moving forward shift. And yep. I really enjoyed that. Session. You know that this is a topic that God's laid on my heart for my ministry as well. Um, yes. Real quick, shameless plug, we have a new book coming out in mm-hmm. May, um, Invincible, talking about how to move past the mountains in our lives to keep us from moving forward with God. And it's just an area God's really just laid on my heart. It's going to be our 2019 mentor theme. So I really mm. connected with this section. Um, can you share with the guys your thoughts on the need to finally just move forward, stop being stagnant in our walk with God and move forward? So in in this section, I tell a personal story of mine. I was going through a real difficult season in my life and ministry and even even family, just some decisions that I needed to make, Jamie. And um, there was a lot of self-doubt that had crept into my life and into my mind. And it was a trip that was just a blessing over to Tanzania where I was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, which had always been a dream of mine. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a point on the mountain, without going into the whole story, where I stopped out of great fatigue, and which is very uncommon for me, and I couldn't take another step. I, I remember thinking to myself, I can't keep going. This is too hard. I'm turning back. And it was in that moment, one of our porters, one of the local um, guides for us on this trip, I, I don't even remember seeing him the, the entire previous four days. He came up behind me and whispered, keep moving forward, I'll get you to the top. And it was like the Holy Spirit breathed that into my soul at that moment, Jamie. And there's times where people, people's encouragement don't go too far. Um, our own encouragement and our own discipline only takes us so far. And to be quite honest, at some point we need a word from God that sinks deep into our soul, that gives us the strength, the courage, and the hope to keep moving forward. And that's just simply where it happened for me. And as I came down off that mountain, I just realized that I had met with the Lord in a single moment, and his name is Walter. And I actually talk about how everybody needs a Walter, and everybody needs to be a Walter Mm -hmm. in somebody's life. And so um, we... At some point, though, we need to hear the voice of our Creator to keep moving forward. Because our confidence should never be in ourself. It should always be in our God. And that's where, you know, sometimes our confidence can take us so far. But at some point, our abilities, our strength, our emotional stability will fail. And we need to hear the voice of God. And that's where it happened for me. And so that's where that fourth shift made came for my life and um it's become a a theme for me moving forward yeah and i just really loved that section like i said just it resonated with my spirit because it's something that our ministry is really going to be focusing on coming up in 2019 so it was like kindred spirit there and i really enjoyed yeah. it so well guys it's so true we can't stay stuck and stagnant in our walk with god We need to be moving forward. We need to be shifting our gears to jumpstart our walk with God. So I encourage all of you to check out Jason's new book, The Five Shifts. It was a really good book. It was an easy read. It wasn't really long, but it was just full of truth and just a lot of help to help you get jumpstarted in your walk with God. 
So, Jason, how can guys get a copy of the book? So, men, you can go right to Amazon.com where you can pick up a copy, or you can also visit my website, um, jasontorville.com, and you'll be able to click the link there. And so that's really the simplest way I can describe of, of getting this book. All right, guys, if you want to check it out, it's Jason Torville. Just look at the name of the podcast. It's spelled the exact same way as his name, so you can Google that, jasontorville.com, or like you said, go to Amazon. And we're going to be back with more with Jason right after these short messages. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. We're all men under construction. Under Construction is a spiritual how-to book where men come together to share their experiences and the wisdom they've gained on their own journey to biblical manhood and building a legacy of godliness. Written by 30 different men and pastors and men's leaders, Under Construction discusses six key areas all men can grow spiritually. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. God's not finished with you yet. We're all under construction. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Follow the Mantor Guy on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks. Did you know that over 33% of girls have seen pornography online before the age of 13? Protect your daughters by installing Covenant Eyes on all your computers and mobile devices. Covenant Eyes blocks all pornography so that it can't reach your little girl and cause damage to her spiritually or emotionally. Sign up today using the code MANTOR and receive one month of service free. Guys, that's a no-brainer. Try it for a month and see how it helps protect your precious daughters from the filth of internet porn. Sign up using code MANTOR, M-A-N-T-O-U-R, at CovenantEyes.com today. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here. Did you know that only 10% of churches have a healthy, thriving men's ministry? That's only 1 out of 10 churches. Well, my mission is to see this number become 100%. Join me in my work with HEUS Missions to help develop men's ministry in the local church. Become a monthly financial investor in the work God called me to do by going to mentorministries.com slash partner and clicking on the Give Online button. Together, we can see God continue to move among men. Welcome back to the Mentor Guy Podcast. All right, guys, well, welcome back. We're happy to be joined once again by Jason Torval. And Jason, it's about time for our lightning round. All right, so these are going to be quick one word or just short answers. Just let the guys know more about you, get to know you a little bit better. So let's enter the lightning round here. All right. It's time for our lightning round. All right, Chuck Norris or Clint Eastwood? Oh, Chuck Norris, man, there's no, no doubt. I know you're going to say that. I know you love Chuck Norris. <laughs> okay, who's your favorite superhero? That is easy. Iron Man. All right. That's my sister's favorite, too. All <laughs> right. As an Eagles fan, I'll ask you this one here. Would okay. you rather watch the Eagles lose the Super Bowl or miss the Super Bowl and have the Eagles win? Miss the Super Bowl and have the Eagles win, man. We don't come around too often to that one. So. <laughs> All right. Pepperoni or sausage on your pizza? Yes. Both. All right. <laughs> okay, the world's in danger. Do you want James Bond or Jason Bourne to save the day? Oh, hmm. Depends on which James Bond, I guess. You know, that, that, that's, that's the big issue. Um, I'm going to have to go with James Bond. He's a classic, and he knows how to take care of the nuclear bomb somehow. So. All right, who's your favorite Bond? Well, um, the, the, you have some of the classics, you know, Roger Moore and so forth. Um, but Sean Connery, to me, he's the epitome of James Bond. All right. Would you rather watch college football or NFL? I'd rather watch the NFL. All right, me too. And what's your favorite Rocky quote? That's a good question. I'm going through about 20 of them right now. <laughs> um, I think probably one of my favorite quotes, and I'll tell you why, is whenever he wins against Apollo, hand up in the air, Adrian, we did it. And to me, um, that's the journey that my wife and I take. We, we take this journey together. And the fact that he said we did it, to me, that was beautiful. Yeah, I love Rocky. That's a great scene, too. Well, thanks mm -hmm. so much, Jason, for being part of the lightning round here. 
The Mantor Lead Pipe, right in an ink NFL pick. All right, Jason, who are your AFC and NFC Super Bowl picks? I already know who your NFC is, but I'll let you say it anyways. Well, I'll tell you what, um, for the Eagles, definitely going to take them. And I am rooting for the Steelers. I'm hoping for a Turnpike Super Bowl. Could happen. It could. I was all in on the Patriots, even though I hate the Patriots, I thought for sure. But they're not they're not the same team they were last year. Their defense is horrible. So, I don't know. You might be right on that one. Chiefs well, are falling I, apart. and Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to ever count them out. They're a quality team. But that's I'm, I'm rooting for our, the Pennsylvania Super Bowl. So. That'd be interesting. All mm-hmm. right. Well, this week, every week we pick four games and we do our right in the picks. Um, we have the Mantor um, Weekly Pick'em Contest, where the winner gets two free tickets to the Mantor of their choice and a copy of our Under Construction book. So on this week, our Write It in an Ink pick is the Steelers versus the Bengals, and I'm all in on the Steelers on that one. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you. I'm pulling for the Steelers. I grew up in Pittsburgh, too, so, um, so I'm rooting for them. Okay, so you can write it in ink, guys. The Steelers will beat the Bengals. They better. Okay, the second game, Panthers versus the Saints. I'm going with the Saints in that one. You never know what you're going to get with the Panthers. I know. I, t- I think it's time for the Panthers to shine, and um, they have struggled all year. I think they're going to come into their own this second half of the season. Oh, I hope so, because I have Christian McCaffrey in both my fantasy leagues. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then this, final, this third game here is the Vikings versus the Falcons. Uh, I took the Falcons in this game, but I have to admit I am a little concerned. They're not the same team they were in the Super Bowl team last year. Yeah, I still think they have what it takes, though, man. And I think they're hungry. And so I'm going to go with the Falcons as well. I'm going to stay with you on that one. Okay, the last game Hmm. is the Patriots versus the Bills. And I am going with the upset alert here. I'm going to pick the Bills. Patriots and the Bills. The Bills always play them tough when it's in Buffalo. This game's in Buffalo, and I'm going to take the upset here and pick the Bills. Man, Jamie, I love you, but you cannot root against Tom Brady, I'm telling you. And um, so I have to go with the Patriots. All right, well, there's our right it and ink picks this week. Um, we both picked the Steelers. Um, I picked the Saints. Did you pick the Saints or the Panthers? I picked the um, Panthers. All right. We both picked the Falcons, and we split on the Patriots and the Bills. Yep. Shameless plug time. And we talked about <laughs> Jason's new book, The Five Shifts. Um, Jason was also one of the contributors to our new book for Mantor Ministries under construction. And we're also happy to have Jason's going to be a workshop speaker this year at our Greater Philadelphia Mantor. It's going to be April 21st in Ben Salem, PA. Um, Jason, can you quickly share what your workshop topic will be and what the men can expect in this workshop? Sure. Um, I'm going to be talking very specifically about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how God empowers our life. And what I'll be sharing with was a little bit of my personal journey. Um, God called me um, to proclaim his gospel as a pastor, but it was in a season where I was in speech therapy as a young man. And it, it was during that season where I was going during school and other settings, just learning to talk right. Well, all of a sudden, the Lord baptized me with this Holy Spirit, and it was really the beginning portion of God healing that area of my life so that I'd be ready to do His work later on. And ultimately, God is never, ever, ever looking for our ability, but He is looking for our availability. And so I'm looking forward to being a part of that time with guys and helping them receive all that God has for them. That's such a great testimony that the Holy, being filled with the Holy Spirit helped you overcome this um, speech problem. Now you do a podcast. You probably would never would have thought that, but it just shows how yep. the Holy Spirit changes our lives. He does. So, guys, um, if you're going to be in the Philadelphia area, mark it on your calendars, April 21st, 2018, in Ben Salem, PA. It's the Greater Philadelphia Mentor. Happy to have Jason be a part of that. Well, Jason, as we wrap up, what's your most practical, easy-to-apply recommendation for any man who's looking to jumpstart his walk with God? I think it's shift number two, um, which we didn't get a chance to talk about, but it's speaking life. Our words are prophetic, and if you show me somebody's words that they use, I'll show you their future. 
And the greatest way to jumpstart your life is to change the words that come out of your life. The power of life and death are in the tongue. That's great advice. So, um, so well, Jason, thank you so much for being our guest today on the Mantra God podcast. It's always great talking with you and seeing you. And it's glad to have you on to share your heart and your new resource with the men. Man, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate what you're doing for the guys across um, this region and across the globe. And um, keep up the good work, man. It's a pleasure being with you and your listeners today. All right. And guys, I highly recommend go check out Jason's new book, The Five Shifts. You're not going to want to miss this. Um, you can order your copy today at Amazon or at jasontorval.com. And like I said, don't forget, Jason's going to be speaking at the Greater Philly Mantor on April 21st. And you can learn more about that at mantorministries.com. The Mantor Guy's Final Thought. Well, guys, we heard a lot from Jason today about how we can jumpstart our walk with God. And I really enjoyed what he had to say, especially the section, the final section we talked about, the need to move forward. And I think this is an area so many men just get stuck on. We don't leave our current situation, our current things, and move forward with God. We kind of stay stuck where we are, and we're not gaining the victory, we're not overcoming. And, you know, it's one of those things that just really breaks my heart because God has promised so much more for his children. He's given us this hope and this future. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life and heal our past and help us to overcome and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into his victory in our lives, we can move forward in everything that God created us to be. So I just want that to be my final thought today. You know, allow the Holy Spirit in your time of prayer, ask him, You know, Holy Spirit, what areas in my life am I stuck? Am I stagnant? What areas can I work on moving forward and overcoming so that my spiritual life can be jump-started and I can grow in my walk with God even more? So I encourage you today, make that your prayer this week. Pray, Holy Spirit, what areas in my life do I need to work on, do I need to move forward in and become the man that you created me to be? So that's my encouragement for you this week. And like I said, check out Jason's book. It's a great book. And once again, you'll thank you so much for listening to the Mentor Guy podcast. Thank you for giving us your time. I know your time is valuable. I know a lot of us struggle to find time in our lives for things like this. So thank you so much for sharing your time and listening for another week. Um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on the Mentor Guy podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit mantorministries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mantor conferences. 